lemonade flavored Gatorade sound great. When you think of professional athletes, you tend to think of an aggressive, alpha competitive world full of militant super freaks that are willing to win at any cost. There is little room for emotion, love, or even self-awareness because any of this could easily take away the competitive edge. This is apparent when we look at athletes such as Michael Jordan, the man with one of the biggest egos in the game. Jordan had no hesitancy in being mean-spirited, telling the shortest basketball player in league history to do this mid-game. Or when he reminded a reporter that there is no I in team, but there is one in win. Similarly, we could look at a young Kobe and Shaq who regularly used the media to trade insults at the expense of team chemistry. And these guys won. A lot. Perhaps there is something to say about competitiveness, about heartless and egomaniacal winning no matter what, but rarely is it mentioned that these guys won despite their personalities. Sure, a ruthless commitment to being the best is good motivation, but it can also cause issues, especially when you're in a team sport. Enter Phil Jackson, the man who coached both of these players and managed to win 11 rings in total, 6 with Jordan and 5 with Kobe. And how did he do it? With a healthy dose of Zen mindfulness, Native American spiritualism, some Nietzsche, has, and good old compassion. This video is sponsored by Babbel, the number one language learning app in the world with more than 10 million subscriptions worldwide. I've mentioned before that I study in Montreal, a largely bilingual city. Although I've really enjoyed Montreal without speaking French, I've always felt like I'm missing out on the total experience. I wanted to show respect for the local language and more deeply engage in Quebecois culture, so I decided to start learning French. But after simply jumping into it, as well as trying so many different apps and online courses, I realized that learning another language isn't easy. That is until I tried Babbel an app that has really stood out to me as the clear winner in my French language journey. Firstly, Babbel has been proven to get you competently speaking a new language in only three weeks. With only 10 to 15 minutes a day, it's an incredibly easy way to incorporate language learning into your daily routine. Secondly, with Babbel Live, Babbel provides you with live online classes that really increase engagement and provide a more social way to learn the language of your choice. You can add these classes to your existing subscription for an additional fee, or just subscribe to them as a standalone product. Finally, Babbel has recently added language learning games, short stories, podcasts, and culture clips to the app. Learning a language has never been more fun. By clicking the link on the description below and buying six months, you'll get Babbel for six extra months for free. And your first lesson is completely free. Firstly, I should say that competitiveness itself, in our personal and professional lives, is a reasonable comparison to this image of the winner's mentality in the pro sports world. We navigate the world with a constant inner voice telling us to disregard our emotions, never waste time, and routinize and systemize everything we touch. Productivity is key, and for many, the world is a hyper-competitive arena of besting one another, with little room for sacredness or purpose. Is this the right way to look at things? Phil Jackson would greatly disagree with this approach. Born in 1945 in Montana to a deeply religious household, Jackson was on his way to becoming a minister. However, Jackson's talents as a basketball player led him to a successful college and later professional career, winning two titles with the Knicks. In college, Jackson would begin to study and practice Buddhist meditation. He would also read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, a book that argues for a middle ground between the emotional and romantic viewpoint of living in the present and the more classical view of reason and pursuing truth. Jackson noticed that the NBA experience, although full of fame and monetary excitement, was also soul-deadening. Night after night, he slept in different hotels in different cities. Jackson experienced a sense of placelessness that came with the pro-athlete world where one's identity was fragmented and fleeting. He learned to use the practice of mindfulness to cure this sort of spiritual malaise. The main theme that he would carry from his life as a player to his life as a coach was the value of inner peace. 
the secret is not thinking. That doesn't mean being stupid. It means quieting the endless jabbering of thoughts so that your body can do instinctively what it's been trained to do without the mind getting in the way. This is evident in his recruitment of George Mumford, a sports psychologist who used a mix of meditation, zen, and yoga. Mumford had previously worked with terminally ill patients and hardened criminals, so he probably was expecting training the world's greatest to come with ease. But Mumford hadn't met Michael Jordan, a man who he initially diagnosed as having bipolar disorder. Jordan appeared in a constant state of mania, with high energy, high extroversion, hyper-competitiveness, and egomaniacal behaviors. However, after observing Jordan for a long period of time, he noticed few moments of depression and came to the conclusion that this really was just who Jordan was. Mumford's job from then on was in some way to get everyone else on his level. The more you have those moments in the zone, the more you want to have them. Most people can't sustain it. His ability to find that state, his ability to concentrate, his ability to lock in was almost superhuman. He was coming from a different place. At the same time, Mumford is credited towards getting Jordan to focus only on the present and quiet his self-oriented inner chatter. As Bill Wennington, a teammate of Jordan's, stated, George tried to get it where you're only thinking about what's happening right now. If you can get that down and just do that, it takes a lot of the pressure off because you're not worried about everything else. Mumford would also be taken to Jackson's Lakers, where the initially skeptical Kobe would eventually consider Mumford to be one of the most influential figures of his life, motivating Kobe to meditate every day. Phil Jackson's career is filled with funny anecdotes in which his compassionate and intellectual approach clashed with the macho hyper-competitiveness of his players. He reportedly gave Shaq Hess's Siddhartha and forced him to return a book report. The book revolves around the young Siddhartha who gives up his materialistic life as a prince for a spiritual journey towards enlightenment. At the time, this book was assigned to Shaq because Jackson felt he was being too materialistic. Jackson had also forced Shaq to read Nietzsche's Ecce Homo, although he reportedly only looked up the cliff notes. That was still enough for Shaq to learn to tone down his self-doubt and extroversion, noting the book's warning that such behavior could lead one down the path to insanity. Jackson's other source of inspiration came about when he started a six-year basketball clinic on South Dakota's Pine Ridge Reservation. Jackson took notice of the Lakota's belief system, especially in the idea that a person is more than an individual, rather they are an integral component to an interconnected universe. This closely paralleled the idea of a basketball team, where a team only functioned well if each player understood the importance of their role within the team's system. This was evident in the Lakota's philosophy of the selfless warrior, who demonstrates courage and honor in order to serve their community. So what were the main ideas that guided Jackson throughout his wind-filled career? Firstly, Jackson noticed that one should always lead from inside out. As time went by, I discovered that the more I spoke from the heart, the more players could hear me and benefit from what I gleaned. Secondly, Jackson emphasized that the ego has no place in being effective. The more I tried to exert power directly, the less powerful I became. I learned to dial back my ego and distribute power as widely as possible without surrendering final authority. Paradoxically, this approach strengthened my effectiveness because it freed me to focus on my job as a keeper of the team's vision. As a coach, Jackson learned that you can't force anyone to do anything. Rather, each individual has to discover their own journey. All you can do is inspire them to seek change. One thing I've learned as a coach is that you can't force your will on people. If you want them to act differently, you need to inspire them to change themselves. Jackson came to appreciate the importance of sacred rituals. He would introduce meditation into practice, and by doing so, he would make practice feel sacred rather than just another thing to do. During their meditation practice, Jackson noticed a one breath, one mind mentality that developed. I discovered that when I had the players sit in silence, breathing together in sync, it helped align them on a nonverbal level far more effectively than words. One breath equals one mind. Jackson also discovered the importance of compassion. The hyper-competitiveness of the NBA and the egos of the players he coached left little room for emotional openness. 
Nonetheless, Jackson realized that a few kind, thoughtful words can have strong transformative effect on relationships, even with the toughest men in the room. Finally, Jackson entirely devoted his focus to the process rather than the outcome. This is strange to think about when you realize that his entire career is filled with impressive outcomes like winning records and championships, but as Jackson states, the most we can hope for is to create the best possible conditions for success, then let go of the outcome. Although there probably isn't a lot of professional basketball players that watch this video, Jackson's lessons should not be restricted to use in the sports world. Focusing on the process, valuing compassion, and benching the ego are all important concepts in enhancing performance and in living a good life, no matter what one is doing. Whether it's a job promotion, relationship issue, or simply trying to live your life, Jackson's advice holds true. Approach the game with no preset agendas, and you'll probably come away surprised at your overall efforts. <laughs>